And then I heard, I know we're getting ready to welcome our streamers, somewhere up north where they have this dam, and this dam had like water, and you can see the, you can see the water line like on the rocks, and it was saying it, it has about 30% of the water left. And they began to talk about how humans are, we have destroyed planet Earth, and that once this water is gone, I, I can't remember which, where it was, but that um, it's going to affect our elect electricity. And all and all the various things. So um, 
Y'all, we in it. This is last days for sure. We'd like to welcome our streamers on tonight. Come on, Remnant. Let's give them a hand clap. Amen. Welcome to Wednesday in the Word of Remnant Church International in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Amen. We're glad to have you. I'm Pastor T. Amen. Welcome. Welcome to another day. Amen. That we could um, dissect the Word of God and 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 we've come tonight to just learn the Word of God and 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 eat the meat. Amen of his word. So we welcome you tonight and we're glad that you came. And uh, we just ask that you grab your Bible and your pencil and paper. Amen. Let somebody know that your on Pastor T is on and we getting ready to get into the word of God. How many how many of you know that we need the word of God today? We need the word of God to keep us. Amen. David said at the entrance of that word is light. Amen. We need the light. We need we need the knowledge of God's word in order to be able to make it. The enemy does not listen to anything else. Amen. Except the word of God. That is the, that's the only thing that wards the enemy off. When Jesus was being tempted, he used the word of God. He didn't use a sword. He didn't use an AK, whatever they call the guns, nine, whatever. He didn't talk about his mama or anything like that. He used the word of God. So we can't use the word of God um, uh, against the enemy if we don't know it if we don't know the word of God. So we, again, we thank God for those that are streaming on tonight. Thank God for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And let's get into the word of God. Amen. So we're going to just do some recapping from last week. We're still on, we're still talking about um, spirits. We've, we've kind of, um, uh, we're kind of in another I'm not going to say that that we segue into something else, but um, this is still under the umbrella of spirits. We're talking about um, spirits. Of course, we're talking about evil spirits. We're talking about good spirits and how these spirits um, interact with human beings. Um, um, how how do um, demonic spirits um, enter into our bodies? What do we do? Um, that um, demonic spirits may come and reside in us. What do we do? Where do these spirits come from? So forth and so on. So I think we're on week number four. Anybody know? I think we're on week number four of um, spirit. So I just want to talk tonight. I'm going to do, again, a recap um, as we continue our study in, in, in spirits. We're going to talk about two laws, of course, what the Apostle Paul was talking about, two laws, um, the law of our flesh that war against the spirit. How many of you know that you have a spirit man? You have a spirit man as well as a flesh man. Amen. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, um, um, talk about that a little bit more and see how all of these things come together. Um, so last week we were talking about the, um, the tripartite of, of humankind, what that is, and then we're going to end tonight in talking about the two laws, the two laws. So last week we discussed um, what is man composed of, what is man composed of, and that is where we get the word tripartite. Um, that means simply means that, that man, that God created man with these three components. Of course, we all know that we live in a what? We live in a body. We have a body. Everybody can attest to that. Uh, but we are a what? We are a spirit. We, we are a spirit. Believe it or not, we are a spirit. We cannot see the spirit, but we are a spirit. And we have a soul. We have a soul. So in order for us to understand how spirits operate in us, we first have to go back to the beginning uh, um, and to understand um, um, why why we have a spirit, why we have a soul, and why we have a body, why we have a body. So, of course, we go back to the, to the word of God and we go back to the beginning, uh, to the beginning. Genesis 2 and 7 says, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. So he formed man out of the dust of the ground. Which part of these three components would that apply to? And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, which the body, spirit, or soul. That's the body. He formed man. He formed our body 
out of the dust of the ground. You ever heard sometimes if you've gone to a funeral, you, 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 you've you heard the, the priest or you heard the pastor uh, say from, from dust to dust and ashes to ashes, we are we are made of dust. Uh, you ever you ever see sometimes when I was younger, sometimes I, I, I would see a, a dog that have died, uh, I don't know how long, but I would see him on the side of the road, and he would be basically dust. The dog would be dust. I see some a few hairs, you understand, because um, animals as well was made from the dust. So that is the body. That is the body. Form, uh, God formed man out of the dust of the ground. That's the body. And he breathed. So which one, which one is the breathe part? Is it the spirit or the soul? We took care of the body. Is it the spirit or the soul? It's the spirit. God breathed his spirit into our nostrils. Amen. And this is why the scripture, I believe, is in 1 Peter 2 and 8 that says um, um, when we die, that our spirit goes back to where? Our spirit goes back to God from where? From whence it what? Came. We talked about last week that the body cannot live without the spirit. There's a scripture that says, in him we what? We live, we move, and have our what? Being because of his spirit. We cannot live without the spirit. If I were to, if my spirit w was to leave my body right now, my body will collapse to the ground. My spirit will go back to the Lord. My body cannot move or function without God's spirit, without the spirit being in me. You understand? Some people say, oh, no, it's your heart. Yeah, those things, of course. But it doesn't matter if your heart is beating. It doesn't matter. Or if your brain is functioning. If God removes his spirit from you, your body will not live. So we understand that. Y'all understand that? So he breathed his spirit huh, and his nostrils, the breath of what? There you go. The breath of life. <laughs> that goes with it. The breath of life. That's why, that's why we are living. And man became a what? A living soul. So we have one left. So. So based on Genesis 2 and 7, and we're gonna, I'm going to give you another scripture, we see that man is comp comprised of or composed of body, spirit, and soul. So last week, we talked about, we talked about the body. Um, um, I just asked you to give me some, just some basic knowledge of the body. One of the things that we wrote about the body was that the body has an expiration date. Amen? Is that scripture? Yes. Give me the scripture. Amen. Grab your microphones. Amen. Y'all got a microphone back there. I see a green one back there. If y'all need one back there. Amen. If, if y'all do. So give me the scripture that tells you that man has an expiration date. So we're talking Bible now. That's, that's it. Can you? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It is appointed unto man once to die. Amen. It's appointed. Unto man wants to die. Will everybody die? Yes. Will everybody die? Yes. Sister Judy said yes. Brother Rafi says no. No. But Dallas, I don't know. Which. But will everybody die? Since the scripture said it is appointed to every man wants to die. So Sister Judy said After yes, everybody that, will die. So anybody else? Sister Gould, Minister Hall, you said no. But our spirit will go back to the Lord, so that means. But will everybody see death? I'm ringing a little bit. Will everybody see death? No. The Bible says it's appointed that every man wants to die, but will everybody see death? So Brother Raffi says no. Give me no. scripture. You got your microphone back there? Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's, is, 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 that, is that the language they use? Yoked up? <laughs> Brother Dallas, I'm ringing a little bit. If you can turn me down a little bit. I think I'm ringing in the, um, in the monitors. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Uh, I believe it was Elijah or Elijah, one of the two. Mm. They, he never uh, tasted death. 
Elijah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, good. And then you also the uh, people when it comes to uh, tribulation times, uh, some individuals uh, will be alive, uh, and they will get uh, they will get caught up. So uh, they will they will meet meet with Christ in the in the sky, and so they those individuals actually won't physically die their their bodies. You mentioned you mentioned Elijah. Who else didn't see death in the Bible? Oh. Enoch. 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 Yeah, Enoch and Elijah. So yes, uh, Brother Rafi is correct. Everybody, even though it's appointed to every man wants to die, everybody will not see death. Everybody will not see death because when Christ come back, the word of God says that the dead in Christ shall rise what? First, then who? Then those that are remain and alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So everybody will not see death. Can you tell me those people that won't see death? Can you? So, so we've just established that those people that will be here during the great tribulation, huh? And those people that will be alive, what people are, what people is that? Or are they? Those are going to, oh, those will be the people that are, are left, uh, not left, but the people that are here on earth, uh, at the end of the, the tribulation mm -hmm. that are believers that didn't get, yes. beheaded, that didn't get beheaded or Correct. Know, didn't die during the tribulation. Yes. Those are the people that are saved that will be here. Those people will not experience death at all. They will not taste the sting of death. That's beautiful. I beg your pardon. First, Thessalonians 4, 4 and 17. 17. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. So yes, sir. I wanted. I just wanted to. I kind of got a little sidebar there, but I but I wanted to just just mention that um, just to make sure. So here's another scripture to to support the fact that we have a body, spirit, and soul. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. Here, be, here begins the reading of God's holy word, and the very God of peace. Who wrote this? Who's the author? Paul. Paul, the apostle Paul. And the very God of peace sanctify you what? Holy. And I pray, and I pray God, your whole spirit, look at there, and soul and body. Yeah. 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 So it makes sense that, that, that man, and including women, I'm talking about mankind, is tripartite. Because, as we mentioned last week, um, we know about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. So now we've established that, that, that um, mankind is composed of three mm, entities. That's a good word, yeah. I was going to say something else. So we talked about the body. Let's give you a couple of scriptures, and then, we, then we're going to move on from here. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. We're talking about the body now. For we must all appear before. Oh, y'all, this, this is one. This came across me the other day, and I wanted to share this with y'all. Look at this. Look how. Okay, I want to pause for a second. I don't, I don't want to go there for a second. Let me, let me just establish this. So, so we stated that the body has an expiration date, Okay. The body is, is it immortal no. or is it mortal? mortal? The body is mortal. What does that mean? It will die. It will die. We could put that on that, Minister Hawking. Can you, can you put that on up for me? Are you, are, are you able to? Uh, the body is physical. The body dies. The body is mortal. Y'all remember the scripture? I think Paul wrote it. Change from, from mortal to immortality. Who is, Im who is immortal? God. God. Yeah. But God created the angels. Yeah. So God is immortal. He cannot die. Woo. Yeah. So the body, the body is visible. You can see, touch the body. Expiration date, physical, and it's mortal. What about the spirit? We stated that the spirit is what? Eternal, right? Because the spirit goes back to where? God when we die. 
The spirit is invisible. Is the spirit mortal? The spirit is what? Why is it immortal? Because it belongs to God, right? Yeah. God gave me a visual. I couldn't understand how God's spirit is in us. I couldn't, like, really comprehend that. And one day God gave me a little visual, just a little bit. And it's like I couldn't see him on the throne because you really can't really see God. You understand what I'm saying? But it's like I can imagine him sitting on the throne. You understand? Sitting on the throne. And some of his, he released, like, some of his spirit from his body and this is how his spirit goes on to us y'all y'all understand what i'm saying this is how god demonstrated that he can release a portion just a little portion on his uh, from him, himself and then and then send it down to minister hall Whew. just a portion so she will have the ability to demonstrate Things outside of the realm of the natural man. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Well, she can touch somebody and heal somebody. Because of ourselves, we can't heal anybody. We need God's spirit. So God gave me a vision. I'm like, that's how you do it? Because I never understood how God, how God did it. Yeah. So the spirit is eternal. It goes back to God. It is immortal. Because it belongs to God. It is invisible because it belongs to God. All of these characteristics of the spirit, we are, we are speaking of God because it's God's spirit. Minister Hall. And it's all those things, mm -hmm. not only because it belongs to God, mm -hmm. but it is like God. Because he said, let us make man in our own image Correct. and likeness. Yes. So we actually, our spirit has taken on the characteristics of the Godhead. Correct. In those traits. Correct. Correct. Isn't that awesome, y'all? So when God says that, uh, uh, I think the Apostle Paul say, don't you know yeah. that your body is the temple of what? The Holy Ghost. <sighs> you know what that means? We just can't do whatever we want to do with our bodies. Some people say, it's my body. I can do whatever I want to do with it. It's mine. It ain't yours. None of these things are ours. We created nothing. Did we? It, nothing belongs to us. It's just temporary. Our home, our cars, our money, it doesn't belong to us. God puts us over it to be good steward over those things. Like he told Adam. I'm giving you dominion. He gave them, as a matter of fact, he gave them, meaning the man and the woman, dominion over these things. You didn't create it. I remember one day I was talking to my son, and my son was like, well, I guess he was trying to throw shade or he was trying to be smart with me. He was like, well, you created me. I said, no, I did not. I didn't create you. I gave birth to you, but God created you. You all understand? See, we can't, see, we can't take God's glory. We got to get it straight. You understand? Uh-uh-uh. Because I don't even know how you got. Well, I know how you got there, but I, <laughs> I just don't know how it all formed and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of this belongs to God, even the body that we can touch. All this belongs to him. Now, the soul, we stated last week that the soul is eternal. God, what, say that again, Minister. Get the microphone and say that. Oh, my God. The soul shall never die. The soul shall never die. The soul is immortal. What about if you're not saved? Is your soul still immortal? Yes. Why? How can you say that? But a person ain't saved. How do you know? Give me scripture. If you don't know the scripture, just tell me. Nah. Huh? It belongs to God. True. True. Yeah. So, so I know, Minister Hall, you're looking for that. So I'm going to pause that for a moment. So the soul is eternal. The soul is invisible. Huh? And the soul is immortal. Now, that's scary. 
that's scary that our soul is immortal. So what that's telling me, once you leave the body, once your spirit leaves the body, the soul is where we're going to spend eternity. The soul is the part of us that will reside with God or that we will be in eternal damnation. So those people that are, that have not been converted, they're not saved. Y'all, y'all know how some people say that they want to live forever. Did you know that we will live forever? We will live forever. Not in the body, but the soul will live forever. You will be conscious. When you die, you will know that you are dead. You will see yourself wherever you, wherever you fell at or wherever, collapsed or whatever the case is in the hospital or whatever, you will see yourself. And now the soul is the part of you that will spend eternity either with God or on the other side. Yeah. So when I say that the soul is immortal, this is the part of us that I was reading. I, I was reading the scripture when it was talking about how hell has enlarged herself. Meaning that there are more people going, going to hell every day. It's getting wider and wider and wider. It's immeasurable right now. You understand? And how the body talks, I mean, how the Bible says that, that, that those that will spend eternity in hell, that they will constantly feel the burning and the tearing. Their, bod- their bodies will stay on fire. It won't be consumed. Y'all hear? Because when we see things that's on fire, we see it on fire and it burns and then all, all that's left is just ashes. That's not how it will be. It's eternal. So your body will constantly regenerate itself throughout eternity if, you, if you're going to spend it in hell. That's why I don't want to go to hell. Y'all understand what I'm saying? No, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. So, so I, wanted, I wanted us to get an understanding of this so that we don't allow this body to forget about these things. Y'all know the scripture that says, um, what does it profit a man to gain the what? The whole world and lose what? Lose his spirit. Lose his soul. It don't even say lose his spirit. What is it? What does the body profit? Because the body wants all of that stuff. We want all the money. We want all the women. We want all the fame. We want the nice. That's body. That's flesh. The flesh desires all of those things. We want, we, want, we want millions of dollars. We want to be able to shop and get whatever we want. That's, that's flesh. So we get caught up in the flesh and we forget about the soul. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world of flesh and lose this? We forget about this, but we concentrate and we beautify the body when the body will expire. And we don't even know when it will expire. The Bible says that we're like fish being caught up in a net. We don't even know. You think fish know they're getting ready to caught up in the net? You think that thing that's hanging in the water, if they knew they was getting ready to get, to get yoked up, you think that they, would, that, that, that they would bite the worm? No, they wouldn't. They didn't even know. And so it is with us. Watch this scripture, y'all. Scripture. Second uh, Corinthians 5 and 10. Second Corinthians 5 and 10. And listen, we're going to get this and we're getting ready to get out of here. We must all appear for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Everybody. Now look what it's saying. That everyone may receive the things done and where? According to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We will all give an account what we have done in the body. The body. (laughs) To me, that's scary. That's scary. So we have to, we have to constantly put our body under subjection. We have to tell the body, body, the spirit has to tell the body, you don't tell me what to do. 
Because the body wants to vaunt itself. The body wants control. Because we are flesh. And that's all we know is flesh. We don't really know the spirit. You understand? We have to study to understand the spirit of God. You understand? We have to study that. And that's why I asked that question um, a couple of months ago when I said, how much of your spirit based on percentage is controlling you from zero to 100%. How much of your spirit controls you? How much of your body controls you? And which one is more dominant in your life? Is it your body or is it your spirit that's more dominant? True? <laughs> it's true. So you said that if there were no consequences, so so do you serve God because there's consequences? <laughs> Running the red light, Minnesota Hall, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So as you mentioned, even about the gym, I'm going to get you Minnesota Hall. The spirit, we have to constantly build up, work out that spirit, man. And how we work out the spirit, man? Through the word, Through the word of God. And prayer and study. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. The more you read your Bible, the more you get close to God, the more you do your, your time of meditation with him, the stronger the body get, the uh, spirit get. And when the spirit gets stronger, this gets weaker. But sometimes as believers, we flip it. We flip it. The body should not dominate our spirit. The body wants to cuss. The spirit man should kick in and be like, mm-mm, mm-mm, you know that's not right. What would Jesus do? You understand? But if you wind up cussing anyway, your body has, I'm not going to say full control, but your body is the dominant factor. Minister Hall. Um, Two things. It's like the you made me think of the song that says, "The longer I serve Him, oh, the, sweeter. the sweeter He grows. Yes, the God. more that I loved Him, oh, the more love He bestows." Yes. And when you're in pursuit of God, where you're Praise saying God. to yourself, "Okay, I'm not just in this because I don't want to go to hell, or you know, I don't want nothing bad to happen to me, and I need God's blessings," but you actually purpose in your heart that you want to get to know Him. Him. See, if we can think about the Holy Spirit as a person yes. that lives in us and we want to get to know and understand him as mm-hmm. a friend, as a counselor, as a guide, mm-hmm. it, it changes your whole perspective mm-hmm. and it creates um, intimacy between you and God because then he's not this... Um, cold and personal being that's mm-hmm. detached from you mm-hmm. you realize that the holy spirit lives in me and loves me mm-hmm. and is rooting for me mm-hmm. and guiding me mm-hmm. and helping me mm-hmm. it changes all the dynamics oh when you look yes. at it that way yes. and that's how we're supposed to look at it because that's who he is yes. he wants a relationship with yes. us yes. this is why he came down in the garden every day mm-hmm. To, to visit sub. Adam and Eve. Wow. It was Amen. just to felt he loved being with them. Yes, yes. And it's the same thing today. Mm-hmm. Now today he himself is not coming, mm-hmm. but the Holy Spirit is here. Mm-hmm. And he he bids us to come. He's like, Oh man, I wish she would have spent some time with me today, but she's been busy all day mm-hmm. and now she's gonna go on Facebook and then fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. He's a person and, and we don't realize that we can reject him, we can make him feel left out, you know. Right. I remember when my children were little, you were talking about the percentage of spirit and flesh. And I used to tell them that Christ 
is the unseen guest at every meal <laughs> and the un and the silent listener mm -hmm. to every conversation. Praise God. And so that I think my grandmother or somebody taught me that. So it stays in my head so that I, I re it comes to me. The Holy Spirit brings it to my mind. And I always remember I'm constant of the fact that, you know, I'm not perfect, but there are times when it'll just click like, hey, the Holy Spirit is 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 here. Mm -hmm. He's always here. He's yeah. listening. You know, Praise God. You, you can't see him, but he is here. Praise God. And it helps you to govern yourself. Mm -hmm. Like when I came in the Uber and that guy was just so rude and just so I got so mad. Oh, wow. But I, as I was writing, I got in and spoke. He didn't answer. That's after he was whatever. And as I was writing along, it's like the Holy Spirit kicks in. You know, it's you remember he's there. Yes. And it's like he was saying to me, yes, he is that way, but you don't even know what he's dealing with or what he's mm -hmm. been through or why he's like that, but you stay in character. And why are you so mad? Yes. You shouldn't be this angry. Right. And I just calm myself down and you know so we have to realize that he's always with us that's right mm -hmm. amen as you were talking minister hall I was thinking about i had to um i had to pay over four hundred dollars because i ac had went out in the apartment and normally it, it was just coming on the weekend there was there was nobody uh, in the front office and that ac was just just kicking up it, it got to 80 degrees so I picked up a phone and called whatever, some guy, he came, fixed it, it was over $400. I didn't care what it was. When you hot, you don't care if that bill $1,000, you're gonna get that AC fixed, okay? And I paid for it, and I paid for it, you know, because I'm thinking that I'm gonna get reimbursed. Well, they did not reimburse me. They, my, um, the management told me they weren't gonna reimburse me, that I wasn't supposed to call, you know, whatever, whatever. Now, immediately, you think like, oh, no, you're going to give me my money back. You're going to give me my money. The body part. Yes. You're going to give me my money back. I'll sue you. You understand? But then the spirit man kicks in. And then the scripture kicks in. The king's heart is in God's hands. Now, if you go and start fussing people out, you're going to mess it up. You people are going to throw you out. You understand? They'll find some kind of way to evict you, hush them out. Less than a couple of days after that, somebody had given me $500. Somebody gave me $500. Now, I kind of still want my money back from the people, but I'm just. <laughs> but you know what? It's like, I'm not going to trip. I'm not going to trip over that. I'm not going to get angry. You understand? I'm not going to do that because anger is just, anger will have you, oh, my God. You can't sleep. You understand? You want to start fighting. That's why the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You take care of things right away. I said they can keep that $400. $400 ain't a little bit of money, y'all. I don't want to get off of no $400, no easy like that. I can, I can buy a whole lot of stuff with $400. He gave it back to you. He gave it back extra. to me. But then in my mind, when I got the money back, I was like, but can I still, can I still get the four back? Right, right. <laughs> see, see y'all, y'all. <laughs> Every time I be up yeah, nine. That's yeah, but the spirit got it. The spirit has to be the dominating force, not the body. Not the body, and it has to grow. But you got to feed it. You got to feed it the word of God. Watch and, this one. And Pastor For, T. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Because the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. See, when yes. the spirit man is flourishing, he bears fruit. Yes, yes. So the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, meekness, temperance, yes. all of that. Oh, my God. So yes. then when you're in the spirit and you're walking not in the flesh but in the spirit, yes. then those it, it manifests. Yes. Praise yeah. God. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. That's right. What? Know ye not that your what? Body. Look how the body transcends into this. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Because we think the body is just flesh. Flesh has, has no dealings <laughs> with the spirit. That's what we think, and it's not true. It all belongs to God, and they all tie in together. The body just uh, 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 encompass, I guess the word I'm looking for, the spirit and the soul. Host, house. 
you know, these things. But look how the scripture says that we're going to have to give an account for what we do in the body. And depending on what we do in the body is where we're going to spend eternal life. Our soul will spend what? The body got to do with the soul. Look at that. Don't ever separate these two. I mean, these three. Don't ever separate it. This keeps the body alive, but my God. I love to say the scripture that, um, oh God, I can't think of the beginning of it, but um, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters, is that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that we will spend eternity with God. This life is so short, you couldn't tell me where 30 years done gone. I don't believe that he 32. Something wrong with the calculation. But every time I calculate it, it come up to 32. Something ain't right. Y'all see how fast time is moving? Yes, yes. Time seems to be double. Yes. You, know, you understand? I, it, I, don't, I don't understand it. It takes me longer to get dressed. I don't know because I'm just getting old. I don't know if that's it too. Or the time, it's just going by so yes, fast. Yes, it is. You know, I can come in here and an hour will be gone. I'll come in here to do whatever and an hour is gone. I'm like, oh my God, where has the time gone? It's like God is speeding up the time. It cannot be the same because God's word is being fulfilled. Minister Hall, you had a question? No, I was going to say that, you know, how you were saying the body and the spirit and the soul ties in. Mm -hmm. It's so important for us to understand that, especially our young people, yes. because we, when we're young, we feel invincible and, you know, just, hey, on top of the world. But everything we do is relevant to all of those three things. For yes. example, premarital sex. Mm -hmm. You say, well, it's my body. Right. I'm not hurting nobody. It's mm -hmm. consensual. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us that sex is for marriage. Mm -hmm. So every time you engage in that, you're thinking it's just a physical activity. Correct. But because God set it aside for married people to make them one, mm -hmm. you're becoming one right. spiritually with everybody you sleep with. Right. You see, correct, correct. and then you, you pick up stuff that My you God. didn't intend to deal mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. That's just one example, mm -hmm. but I wanted to bring that out, you sure. know, how crucial it is that to understand that everything is relevant. Right. There is no separating. Yeah, and then we open the door because we are spirit. Yes. So now we open the, the door to demonic spirits mm -hmm. in our lives because we are spirit. Demonic spirits are not violating us when we do things and invite them in you understand they're within their their legal rights thank you minister hall they're within their legal right to enter into your body and as i stated because we are flesh we don't even know when they come in we don't even know we think oh we think we think we look the same you don't look the same when there's a demonic presence in your life you do not look the same I'm getting ready to say, thank you, Minister Hall. <laughs> you can't see it because now you're blinded. The spirit of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of the enemy blinds you because you've opened demonic doors. And you think you're fooling people like nobody don't know that, you, that you're doing whatever. I know you're getting high. You think I'm stupid? Because the spirit of God that's in me have identified the spirit that's in you. I just don't say nothing. And then, like you say, you got to look. Yeah. Y'all know how people that's on crack, they all look alike. Sometimes I see this boy riding on the bike, and uh, if he's far away, I'm like, oh, that's my brother. He get close. I'm like, oh, that ain't my brother. But it's another guy that's on crack. Are y'all hearing me? Because it's the same spirit. Yes. It's the same. There are, no new, there are no new spirits, no new demons. They've already been made. That's just it. Yeah. And that's why they look alike. Okay. Hmm? You can't hide that. Like people don't have discernment. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Watch this. Uh, Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, this is still Paul, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your what? Your bodies as a living sacrifice. And Minister Hall said it so eloquently that it's not a dead sacrifice. You want to say that again, Minister Hall? You can. 
I said it's a living sacrifice because he specifically said that because he knows they were used to Mosaic law where they will kill animals and offer them as burnt offerings. Mm -hmm. But he's saying now you are the burnt offering. Wow. But you are a living sacrifice alive unto God. Amen. So you're a con continuously offering yourself up, yes. if you will, to God. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Look at the word after that, y'all. Holy. Holy. When the last time, again, you heard somebody preach on holiness? Holy. We don't talk about being holy. The church has, has gone so far left that we think that a preacher or a pastor can live any kind of way. Oh, well, uh, the Bible said don't judge. We all fall short. We fall down, but we get up. You understand? And, and we use these things. But the word of God says to be holy, for I am holy, acceptable unto God, which is our, look how, look how, Look how the body and God, look how that ties in. Look at that. Because he, he created our bodies. That's why I said it all works together. Watch this. Uh, Matthew 18 and 8. Wherefore, oh man, I like this. Wherefore, this is Jesus talking. Wherefore, if your hand or foot offends you, what do we say offend me? Cause you to sin. <laughs> If your hand or foot caused you to sin, that's why back back years ago, y'all, they don't do this no more. They used to cut people like hand or finger off, their hand off if they was caught stealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, 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 were, they were literally, you know. But the sin is really in them. You understand what I'm saying? You could cut the the ex, you know, the extremities or whatever, but but the sin is still in their heart. Yeah. So he said, uh, uh, wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Cut them off and cast them from thee. For it is better for thee to enter in, into life, meaning heaven, huh? maimed, crippled. Look at this. Rather than having both of your hands and both of your feet and be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Now that is, oh my God, if that doesn't paint an analogy or picture for you how dangerous it is that we allow the body to control us and to cause us to sin against God. We think that it's, we think that it's nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mark for, uh, 9 and 43, the same one. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into heaven or life maimed than having two hands to go into hell. And to the fire that never shall be. Can y'all see that? Never shall be what? Quenched. There ain't going to be no firemen in hell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they may be, but they're not going to be. They're not going to be. The, the, uh, right, right. <laughs> Talk about the soul. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from fleshly. See, why all of this stuff? With the soul and the spirit, they're talking about the flesh. Huh? Abstain from fleshly lusts. And what, what did we say fleshly lust is? Everything. <laughs> about everything. Which war against the soul. So now we know we in a battle, y'all. The Bible said that we don't wrestle against, but against and and rulers in high places. Yeah. So there is a war. Even as we sleep. Some people say when you get up in the morning. No, even as you sleep, there's a war that goes on with your flesh man and your spirit man. Your flesh man wants you to spend eternity in hell. There is no question. There is no good in our flesh. No. 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 So when you get up in the morning, you got a purpose in your heart that you're not going to tell me. You're not causing me to go to hell. Amen. I'm not going. Amen. It has to be that intentional. Yes. This is no game. We don't know where death is. I mentioned a, a couple of last week. A young lady, she just died. She's washing dishes. Husband came in the room, found her slumped over in the sink. 
That's how quick death took her. Sometimes we won't get a chance to say goodbye to people. Oh, I ain't say goodbye. Really? Who said that, that God said we can say goodbye? Okay. He, did, he, did he say we can say goodbye? Sometimes we, we can't say goodbye. He said, like a thief. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, she just transitioned just like that. Husband wow. found her slope, slumped over in the sink. Power. Kitchen. Teresa Jones, she was 57, 58. Young. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So sometimes somebody told me, I think my mom was telling me somebody was at Winn Dixie. She was in the checkout line, collapsed right there. Checkout line. <laughs> we don't know where our time at. We got to be ready. Yeah. So there's this constant war that's going on. Paul talked about that. This war that's going on with the flesh. He said, when I want to do right, evil is present. But like I said, we have to reverse that thing. We have to reverse it. When we want to do evil, the spirit of God should be present to shake us. You understand? To do what's right. Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch after your. That's what pastors are supposed to do, y'all. They watch after your soul. Not your backside. Y'all ain't say nothing. Not your front. Not your purse. Not your pocketbook. You understand? They supposed to watch after your soul. And if a pastor is watching after your soul, that means sometimes there got to be some correction. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're watching after your eternal soul. You may not understand it. You know, sometimes when your mom used to beat you, you may not understand it now, but you'll understand it later. Y'all remember that? I'd be like, forget about later. I don't want no beating. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yes, we watch after your soul, not your body, not your spirit, but your, where are you going to spend eternity? And we're held in high, in high account. We have to give an account. Pastors don't understand this is not a game. This is not you will spend your soul in, in, in hell messing around with people's souls. Yeah. As, as they must give an account. There you go. There's the word of God right there. Luke uh, 12 and 20. But God said unto him, thy fool. Who is this we're talking about? This night thy soul shall be required of you. Then whose things will it be? And who going to divide up your stuff, your inheritance? God told him your soul, not your body and not the spirit. He said your soul going to be required. Where you're getting ready to spend your eternity at is going to be required. What shall it profit a man? There you go. Uh, if he should gain the whole world, popularity. Uh, everybody know your name, household name. But the Bible said you lose your soul. This is a, um, this is a um, I'm not going to say, I guess a rhetorical you know what I'm saying? It's like there's really, he's asking the question, but it's really no answer to it. It's like nothing. That's what it means. Absolutely nothing. Matthew 22, 37. And Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord God with all of thy what? Heart with all of thy. They go to soul, y'all. They go to soul. They go to soul. Revelation 6 and 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. The souls, not their body. The body is here and not their spirit. And for the testimony they, uh, which, they, which, they, um, which they held. So the apostle John said, I saw the souls of them. Watch this, Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I don't know who told me this. I think Minister Verbin told me this. Um, um, and I have to find the tape. Um, Muhammad Ali was being interviewed. He was being interviewed. And they asked him, I can't remember what the question was, you know, whatever. And he began to say, listen, nothing in this world don't matter. No cause, no money. And he began to say, that we own nothing. We own nothing. 
He said, people want to aspire to be me. He said, it's nothing. And he gave this long, this long dialogue. And when he finished, he said, there's only one thing that you should be concentrating on in this world, and that is going to heaven. Muhammad Ali said that. Yeah. He began to find God as he got older. He began to renounce. Uh, what was he in, y'all? The Muslim. Islam. He began to renounce that. Huh? Because they really wasn't, wasn't practicing what they were preaching. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what he said. I'm like, wow. He said, this stuff is nothing. You going to die? He said, he said, even your wife not, is, is not your wife. He said, die and then come back next year and you're and you going to sit in the bed with another man. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, that ain't your wife. He said, she ain't your wife. Sobering. Because he's a man that seemed like he wanted it all. I'm the heavyweight champion. I'm going to bust you in the back of the head. And it seemed like he wanted it all, all the money and everything. And then after you get all that, after a while, it's like, wait a minute. What is the next high? Because how many houses can you buy? How many cars can you buy? How much gold chains can you buy? What's next? Where can I get this, this high that's eternal? God. That's why the enemy tricks us in getting drunk and getting high and getting stoned. Whatever the words they use now, I don't know what the words are. That's why the enemy tricks us. And the high is just temporary. For what? 15 seconds? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But with God, it is an eternal high. I can't get enough of God. I can't get enough of his word. I'm in love with his word. I'm in love with, I want more and more and more. I'm like, God, give me more, give me more, give me more. I want more of you and less of this world. Yeah. Who cares about down here? Yeah. First, uh, first Peter 2 and 25. For, you were, for ye were, were as sheep, the word of God refers to, uh, refers to us as sheep going astray. But I now return unto the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. Who is that, y'all? That is Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. He is the bishop. He is the overseer. He watches huh, after our soul. Not the body, not the spirit, but the soul. But the soul. Watch this. I'm giving y'all scriptures, y'all. Listen, I've already, I've, already made, I've already made it clear based on these scriptures. But I hope y'all writing this down. And fear not, I love this one, I love this one, I love it. Fear, fear not, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, who's him, which is able to destroy both the soul and the body. And where, y'all, what is this talking about? But what do you mean by fear not, fear not, which, which can kill, fill them? Don't be afraid of people that can, that can kill you. That's why we mentioned about the girl that, the, the, you remember, the, the, the guy asked her, they came to the Columbine, and he asked her, you know, do you, do you love Jesus? Do you serve Jesus? And she said, yeah, and he shot her in the head. She didn't care that he was able to kill the body. You understand? Don't fear who can kill your body? Mm, somebody got a gun come up in here? Hey, that's, not, that's not a good feeling. It's scary. Huh? And ask us, do y'all believe in God now? How many of us will say yeah? And how many will like, but wait a minute. Hold up. What God you talking about? <laughs> yeah. We laugh at Peter, but... Some of us will do the same thing. We're going to church all of our life. We're, we will deny Jesus in a heartbeat. Somebody asked, Pastor, you'll do that? I don't know. I hope not. Because we don't know. Oh, honey, I'll never do that. Never say never. <laughs> huh? I hope not. Because Peter said he wasn't going to do it, but he did it. God said, as short as grits is grocery, you're going to deny me. Now, when God tells you you're going to do something, you're going to do it. He hadn't been converted. Correct. Y'all know Peter was gangster. So he said, don't worry about 
who can kill a body. But he said, worry about who can destroy your body and your soul. Man, man cannot destroy your soul because it's invisible. It's eternal. Man, man cannot touch, touch your soul. Only God is able to do that. Only God is able to do that. I'm excited about that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about that. James 5 and 20. Let him know. Let him know that he which uh, coveted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. What is that saying, y'all? What is that saying in, in today's world? That say converted. What did I say? I keep saying coveted, converted. What is what does that mean? What is what is this? What is this this particular text? What is it saying? Become saved, or. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if if you if 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 God uses you um, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking is it when we okay, we are out there sinning. Mm -hmm. But when we turn away from the sinful ways, mm -hmm. it saves a soul from death. From eternal death. Right. So what, what I'm thinking that this means is like if somebody that's that's not saved because it said sinner mm -hmm. uh -huh, converted the sinner from the error of his way mm -hmm. shall save a soul from eternal death. You're saving his soul from eternal death. That's powerful. Yeah. We just think that we're giving somebody the sinner's prayer. That's not what we're doing. Huh? Yeah. We're saving their soul from eternal death. That's powerful, y'all. This is the great commission. That's why we should never take it lightly huh? when we're witnessing to people. Acts 2, 2 and 31. Any questions so far? He's seen this before I spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Who is this we're talking about? And whose soul? Jesus got a soul? Right? Huh? It makes sense, right? Because we were made in his image, right? Yeah. God said, let us, let us make man and what? Our image. So it makes sense that Jesus had a body, has a soul, and we know that he had a spirit, right? How do we know that? Give me scripture. How do we know he had a soul? What did he say? He gave up the ghost. And he commended back to where? He said, I commend my spirit. To you, Father. Back to God. He could, but he had he had the power to to end his life. We we really don't. You understand? Aside from us taking our own lives, but he just he was finished. He he did what what God told him to accomplish, and he said, he said, what I said, he said it is finished. Right? I commend my spirit back to God. So Christ had a body, soul, and a spirit. Because he was fully man. Fully man. So he had to, to pass the test and qualify to be our sacrificial lamb. That's right. He had to overcome sin in the flesh. Right. There was no cheating. Right. But people look at Christ like, oh, wait, that's, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. We can't do that. Could, can we or could we have done everything that Christ did? Yes. You better believe it. You better believe it. So when we look at Christ, because he's, he's our brother, really. You understand what I'm saying? So when we look at Christ, some people say, oh, I can't do it. That's Jesus. He came in flesh to prove to us that we can do the same exploits as him. We can walk on water. We know that Peter did. We know that. We can raise people from the dead. Peter did. Right? Did Peter not raise people from the dead? Yes, he did. Gangster Peter. Just stabbing the man up. Take the man ear off. Raise somebody from the dead. How was that possible? Because Jesus says, greater exploits will we do. 
So what do we do in this, in this time? I don't see that today in churches. I don't see miracles, signs, and wonders. Where is that today? Why are we not doing greater things than God? You know why, y'all? We're concerned about this. We're concerned about the body, the flesh. Yeah? You get closer to God with this? <sighs> Benny Hinn? Okay, I, I was getting ready to say something bad. Y'all wouldn't have liked it. Yes, uh, Minister Hall. It's because we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to have his rightful place in our lives. Yes. We think that he is this thing that you feel and it quickens you in church. But Jesus said, he's going to replace me. And he's not just going to come live among you. He's going to live in you. And he's going to give you power for service. Yes. And nothing will be impossible with him on board. My God. But instead of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we operating in Father, Son, and flesh. Mm. And we're trying to do a work, but it's yes. Father, Son, and flesh. Yes. And so without the Holy Spirit being reinstated into his proper place mm -hmm. in the kingdom, in the body of Christ, in our lives, mm -hmm. we're not going to see those greater works because yes. they can only come through supernatural, uh, um, through a supernatural move. And it, it's going to happen through us. That's why he said he's able to do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly above mm -hmm. all you can ask or think, mm -hmm. but we don't never read the last part. Yes, yes. It's according to the power that worketh in us. Yes, yes. So he's yes. not going to just be doing this right, stuff. That's he's right. going to do it through, through us, us. That's right. when we're surrendered. That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, spirit. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. We're talking about the spirit, man. Then shall the dust, here we go, return to the earth. What's the dust? The body? Yeah, return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, let us, there we go, make man in our own image. After our likeness. After our likeness. So again, as I was mentioning before, that, that even God talked about his soul. Even God himself talked about his soul. His soul. And this is why. We could, we could um, 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 do certain things, and this is why we have, of course, the body, spirit, and soul, because also Christ did. We talked about what is the spirit. We talked about what is the spirit. Spirits are, um, spirits are forces which direct our bodies. The spirit directs our bodies. Now, here's the question that mean, uh, we had, uh, uh, Rafi and I had, um, a dialogue going one day. Can we, can we perform any act, whether good or bad, without, the, without a spirit um, causing us to do this particular thing? Can we do things on our own without any spirit causing us to do anything? No. Anybody else? Minister Hall says no. So what about our own free will? What about our own what about our own free will? Our free will is governed by God's will. If there's such a thing. So I think so. So you think so 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 Minister Hall said no. Anybody anybody else says yes? That everything we do, everything we do. Is governed by a spirit. Every single thing that we do is governed by a spirit. Okay, so Minister Hall said no. So give us give us some scripture. It sounds really weird because you think, oh my God, that means every thought I think is either the devil or God. Well, basically, there are only two sides. There's good. There's evil. There's God. There's Satan and his kingdom. Right. So the word of God says you are servants to whomever you yield your members. Mm -hmm. So my answer is based on that scripture because if I am servant or a slave to whomever I yield my members, meaning yield my flesh, my body, my will, right? 
if I'm yielded to God, mm-hmm. and then that means if I'm yielded to God, I'm his servant, and I'm going to be listening or influenced by the Holy Spirit, by the word of God, mm-hmm. by the things that are godly. Mm-hmm. If I'm yielded to the flesh and to Satan, I'm not converted, I ain't checking for God, then I'm yielded to influences from there. Mm-hmm. There's no other place. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Right, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anybody else? Y'all, y'all quiet. Y'all, y'all have to know this. Because if somebody asks of you, you have to know. You have to give an answer. Anybody else has a response? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Very good. That's right. We couldn't do anything without him. Right. So then will you state that, okay, here's the conversation. Here's the conversation Raffi and I had. Okay. Y'all know, y'all heard about the, the young man that um, they, they found his body now. Remember, they thought that he had killed the girlfriend. Remember Gabby? Gabby, I can't remember the last name. Petito. And then they just found his body or whatever. So Raffi and I had this dialogue going. So he was like, well, I just don't understand. Like, like why would he do that? I, I can't remember what, what was your question. You remember, Raffi? Can you, can you, can you? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Right. Correct. So what do you think? So what do you think? What do you think caused him to obviously kill the girl? What What was it? Which Which spirit? Only two spirits, right? Which spirit? So, so where's the spirit of anger from? Okay, it's just a good. That's, y'all took y'all that long. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, listen, the, the Bible says that we can be angry, right? We're permitted to be angry, right? But what's the other part? But sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your, your wrath. So we can be angry, but there has, to be, there has to be a degree of how long. And we have, to, we, have to, we have to cut the anger off immediately. If the anger festers in you and you go to bed with it, you can kill. We all are capable of, uh, capable of killing people. Every last one of them. Me, Minister, all of us are capable of killing people. So, Judy, you can. Believe it or not. We all have that ability. We all. Don't let nobody fool you. Oh, he don't look like a murder. What does a murder look like? We all, we all, we all can do that. Uh, there's a couple of times I want to take some people out. Yeah. Plotted in my mind. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, we all have the academic nature to do that. You understand? So, so what drove him to do that? I don't believe that he planned it. That's just my look. I don't believe he's like, I, like, like he got him and said, oh, I'm going to kill her. I don't believe he planned it. I believe it was an argument. You understand the argument? And one thing about an argument, come in the hall. One thing about an argument, come in the hall. Come on, Mr. Hall, you'll get up a little faster than that. Come on. <laughs> one thing about anger Especially a man knows that he's stronger than a woman. You know, that's just how God designed a man to be stronger. I don't know what it is, but the first thing we do is we grab for the neck. You know what I mean? It's like there. It's like we grab for the neck. You understand? Okay, thank you, Minister. That's all I want. I won't go grab your neck. Uh huh. And because we are so angry, and you start applying pressure to. To somebody, and and it's something about the devil that he will not allow you to stop until the mission is accomplished. 
yeah, 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 yeah. So I was telling Rafi, I said, but because it takes a long time, my understanding it takes about four, about two minutes, I think, for you to lose consciousness, and about four minutes for you to actually die when somebody is somebody is is cutting off your 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 oxygen. It 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 takes a while, yeah. So when he did and he saw her, once she, you know, passed out, I'm sure because somebody said they didn't see him for like four hours. I'm speculating all of this, but they didn't see him for four hours. So I'm sure when he saw her laying on the ground, I'm sure he tried to re revive her. Yeah, he probably tried. You understand? But why didn't he pull away maybe in a minute from her neck? Right, 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 right. But I'm trying for you, I'm trying to illustrate what these spirits, if we allow them to take rain in us, what they will do. I heard somebody say, the devil, the devil will convince you to do something and then call the police on you. <laughs> the devil will convince you to do something and then call the police on you. Because we yield our members to him. And he don't stop. He like a dripping faucet. Somebody told me that, that, that a crack, that dripping water can make a crack in cement. Because it just keep, just keep, just keep dropping, and keep dropping, and keep dropping, and keep dropping. That is what the enemy does to us until he accomplishes his goal. And that is for one, for us to take somebody else's life, and then he ain't finished there. Because now the man was scared. I'm sure he was scared. I'm sure he was scared. So what's the next thing to do? Go out in the woods and not go kill yourself. Devil's like. Because the, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We are governed by spirits. Yes, we are. We just got to make sure that this spirit, this flesh, which the enemy operates through, uh, does, not, does not penetrate the body. You understand? This is why the word of God gives us scripture to help with this flesh, to control this flesh. Huh? I used to like telling lies. I used to lie. Woo! Lie, lie, lie. Yeah, till I read the scripture. Huh? Nobody didn't stop me from lying. I probably didn't got beaten from it. My mom probably beat me. Nobody could stop. When I read that in scripture that all liars will have their place in the lake of fire, that was it. I didn't need no therapy. I didn't need no pills. That's, that's because the spirit, the word of God is the only thing that could subdue the flesh. Nothing else. That's why I give people the word of God. If that can't help you, y'all here tonight? Y'all kind of quiet. I wasn't only around here telling lies. Now, I know y'all was telling lies too. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sister Judy, you never tell lies? Hold on, Sister Judy. Wait a minute now. Hold up. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about you younger. You know, you younger. You tell lies because you're trying to get out of trouble. You didn't tell lies, Brother Dallas? No? I was trying to get out of trouble. See, I didn't have to. No? Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I was just different. Okay. Of course. Absolutely. I didn't follow, I Absolutely. Didn't my, I, didn't, I didn't do what other people did. So he, he had to protect me from a lot of things. So let me ask you this question, Sister Judy. Why was John the Baptist living in the woods and eating locusts and wearing camel skin for his clothes? Who does that? Why was he doing that? Really? What does scripture say? He taught the Bible says that John the Baptist had the Holy Ghost in his mama's womb. The Holy Spirit drove him out.
to live. Listen to this now. We wouldn't even do that. Child, that don't make no sense. That's, that's to, that, I don't take all that. The Holy Ghost drove him because he had an assignment on his life. He had one assignment. And that was to be the forerunner for Jesus Christ, to baptize him. And once he did that, it was over. They killed him. It was done. His assignment was over. The Spirit of God drove John the Baptist to do what he did. Not John the Baptist. Who would choose that? None of us would choose a life like that. Isolated. Living in the wood. What? In that hot? Eating, eating grass. Y'all know good and well y'all would not eat no grasshoppers. Or hopper grass, whatever you call them. What? And honey. Y'all know y'all would not eat that. All this food around here. So something, a spirit, spirits are forces which direct our bodies. They direct our bodies. You call it a robotic, whatever you want to call it. The spirit of God has me standing here tonight. Not Teresa. I wouldn't be here like Brother Ravi said. We'll be out there wilding out. I think I look all right. I think I can get a couple of phone numbers. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Let's just be real on this thing. We are here even tonight on a Wednesday night because God's spirit placed us here. Of ourselves, we're nothing. We need God's. That's why David said, whatever you do, don't remove your Holy Spirit away from me. Without the absence of God's spirit, we are open ground for the enemy. Don't remove your spirit away from me, God. That's always my prayer. God, don't, I need you. They control, the spirits control our bodies in the inner force which emanates a person in one direction or another. That's all it is, y'all. Mm-hmm. It's all, this stuff has already been planned from the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. That's why it is imperative People in the world don't understand this. People in the world don't understand that. Uh uh-uh. uh. The stuff with the young man, we getting ready to go, and, and the young lady, that was a buildup. That didn't happen overnight. The enemy never come in and kick the door down. He always starts small. I tell people this all the time. He always starts small. It is a buildup. He didn't just choke that girl out like that. There was stuff going on before. The door was already open. It was a setup. That boy was being set, and they riding out in the woods. Nobody there. Oh, girl, you dead, girl, walking. (laughs) Well, ain't nobody around. You hollering and screaming. (laughs) Ah, It's echoing all over the... (laughs) Stuff was was already an open door. Whatever was going on with them was already an open door. It was just a ticking, ticking time bomb. Ticking time bomb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're getting ready to go. This is, why I, this is why I have said in the past, y'all, even with serial killers, they have, again, cut the brain open and try to figure out maybe they got something different in their brain. Maybe it's something physical. And every time they've done it, I told you they did it with um, Jeffrey Dahmer. Who eats people and put their bodies, fingers in the refrigerator so you can have it for breakfast? with some grits. Who does that? He couldn't even stop. He, you, know, you know what? He told, he was being, uh, uh, he was being interviewed, and they t- he told him, if you let me out, he said, I'll do it again. He said, keep me in here. He was scared of his own self. And when they, when they, when they sliced his brain open, it was the same function or the same brain as a normal person, a person that did not uh, commit murder. Because it's not physical. It's spiritual. He opened the door. Oh, his parents. Somebody opened the door. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all, I still didn't go to part two yet, but we getting ready to go. Amen, brother. We're out here looking like, yeah, you can go to part two. Amen. Any, Any questions, any comments? Any questions, any comments? Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. For his word on tonight. I hope you have um, gotten something out of this tonight. Come on, Remnant. Let's 
give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. We thank God for our streamers. Amen. I want to encourage our streamers, get into your word, get into your word. I always encourage people, if you want to read a particular book that will deal with your flesh, start with the book, the book of Proverbs. It deals with everything that ails us as human beings. We all basically go through the same thing. We fall for the same okie doke the devil doing the same thing as he did in the first century as he is doing in the 21st century. But I promise you, if you go to the word of God, amen, God will, God's spirit will kick in to help govern the body. So we pray this has been a blessing to you tonight. We give God thanks for you, and we look forward. Listen, we want to invite you to Sunday. It's our youth Sunday. We're getting ready to raise the roof. It's going to be lit up in here. So if you woke so that's a couple of little young people word. If you woke, we want you to come in and 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 visit us. Don't let Brother Raffi. <laughs> we want you to come in and stream with us on Sunday at 1130 as we um, allow the young people, amen, to just have their their way and, and just worship the Lord on, on Sunday. So on the 31st, we invite you. And next Wednesday, we will not be here. We will be in convocation, amen, uh, with our bishop. So next week, Wednesday, Bible study will be canceled, but we will be here the following Wednesday. So we look forward to seeing you Sunday. Until then, may God richly bless you is my prayer. Come on, remnant, let's give our streamers again a hand clap. Amen, amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. We bless you. Thank you.